Dallas Smythe is a native of Regina, Saskatchewan, born in March of 1907. His studies were primarily in the area of economics, with an A.B. and a Ph.D. in economics from the University of California at Berkeley. His career in communications has spanned the entire period of development of modern communication technology, as well as the creation and establishment of communications as a field of academic and professional study. Some highlights of his early career. My work as chief economist at the FCC was to bring to bear social science knowledge on the practical problems which the FCC faced. For example, should there be more rural telephone service, the number of farms with phones had been declining, and what should be done about it? We weren't, therefore, dealing with any abstract uh, notion of technology, but a very concrete problem. So I came to define technology in those terms, as an assembly of people and things to get something done. Uh, the uh, Greeks had a better word for it. They called it the industrial arts. Uh, in fact, technology, as we use the term today, is another uh, name for modern industrialism. Dallas Smythe went to the University of Illinois in 1948 and began pioneering work in content analysis of television and radio programs. I became research director for the National Association of Educational Broadcasters. In 1950, the FCC was holding allocation hearings to determine the use of the UHF part of the spectrum. If educators were to have any chance of getting channels, uh, they had to have them reserved for them. So we planned and did a detailed monitoring study for a full week of all seven stations in New York City, counting the acts of violence, uh, looking at the nature of the programs, the amount of advertising, and so forth. We presented this to the FCC, and it was largely instrumental in getting the reservation of the channels, which are now the NET network in the United States. Uh, this was followed by more such studies, and it uh, stimulated a lot of content analysis, which uh, went into the areas of violence and obscenity, done mostly by other people, but some of it by me. Some of that content analysis is very good indeed. Uh, for example, Nordenstrang and Veris in Finland did a study for UNESCO of TV content on a world scale, which showed the one-way flow of uh, information of all kinds from the United States and provided a basis for the claim that there should be a new and more balanced information order in the world. I stopped doing content analysis in the mid-1950s. Uh, because I wanted not only to describe the content of the mass media, but to find out why and how it was what it was. So I concentrated on the organization of industry and government, technology, markets and policies, what we now call institutional or critical analysis. When Dallas Smythe went to the University of Illinois in 1948, he was one of the senior people in the first program of academic studies and communications. Our Institute of Communications Research housed the first coherent program of undergraduate and graduate studies of communications. I was in charge of the PhD program for a number of years, and we produced a large number of PhDs who moved to other universities and in effect carried our program with them. I suppose I taught the first course in the political economy of communications ever, beginning in 1948. As you might expect, it reflected my experience and concentrated on policy and institutions, technology and that unique human resource, the radio spectrum, which is to communications as water is to fish and soil is to plants and trees. My work in the economic, political, social and policy aspects of satellites in 1957-58 was prompted by the Soviet Sputnik and the U.S. aerospace program. It was obvious that communication satellites we're going to be a spin-off of this essentially military program of R&D. So I got involved in policy formation. I made studies, I testified before Senate committees in Washington, and I wrote a lot about the policy choices which had to be made nationally and by international organizations such as the UN. In 1963, Dallas Smythe returned to Canada to the University of Saskatchewan Regina campus as chairman of the Division of the Social Sciences. 
He served as advisor to the new Federal Department of Communications and did a study for Eric Kieran's telecommission. He was deeply involved with the Canadian National UNESCO Commission and represented Canada at the UNESCO Conference on Communications in 1969 in Montreal. He also represented Canada on the UNESCO Panel of Experts on International Communications in Paris in 1971 and presented papers and participated in a panel of the American Society of International Law and a panel of the Canadian Society of International Law, 1970-73. He also presented research papers at meetings called by the World Council of Churches and Bob Hutchins Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Athens and Santa Barbara. After retirement, he accepted the chairmanship of the new Department of Communications at Simon Fraser University, serving for two years and continuing his teaching to the present time. Simon Fraser University now has a new large undergraduate program in communications, an MA and PhD program with graduate students from around the world, such as from Sri Lanka, India, Hungary, the UK, Germany, Colombia, Australia, and even Mongolia. Currently, I am carrying a full teaching load and enjoy it very much. I'm also very busy with research and writing. Bill Melody and I have just finished a feasibility study for the Federal Department of Communications concerning the radio spectrum. I'm also involved in a study with EPAL at Lima, Peru on the cultural implications of new technology. And I just returned from London where I attended a meeting of an advisory committee to the World Association of Christian Churches, which is an offshoot of the World Council of Churches, on uh, the uh, relation of communications to development. Uh, in addition, I'm uh, busy preparing papers for the International Association of Mass Communications Research and uh, doing some book reviews. I'm on the editorial boards of several of the leading communications journals. Dallas Smythe was instrumental in the growth and development of the International Association for Mass Communications Research in the past 20 years. In the mid-60s, the IAMCR was a small group dominated by people from a few highly industrialized countries. There's been a need for an association of communications researchers from all over the world, from the developing as well as the developed countries. I've tried to move the organization in that direction with some success. We now include researchers from all over the world, and our last biennial meeting was in Prague. Our next is in India. Over the last half century, his work has led into the establishment of an area of communication study known as critical theory. Critical theory is the analysis of the historical institutional policy process as it relates to change, dynamic change. We should regard technical innovations with a critical eye to that historical process and assess both the damage they do as well as the benefits they confer. Unfortunately, too much research is not critical in that sense. What is needed is effective policy for improving world society. This is the point of the book, Dependency Road. The book has been well received by the academic journals, but the mainstream mass media have ignored it. Its influence has been spreading through the network of communications researchers around the world. The work of Dallas Smythe has often upset some sectors of the establishment both policymakers and many colleagues. I think that the proper role of scientists is to question the generally accepted truths about the real world. Unfortunately, much social science doesn't do that, and I challenge them for that. Uh, you may recall that as Socrates found out, uh, it raises hackles in some quarters when you challenge the accepted truths. I haven't shrunk from critical comment on the received wisdom, regardless of ideological blocks. I'm always criticizing my own work, and I learn especially from students because they give me such valuable criticism. I've been active in research to help humanity avoid war. I'm an officer of the International Alzheimer's Society, which is trying to help find the causes and the cures for that disease, which uh, is a very serious threat to an increasingly aged population. The most important thing about communications for the future is to demythologize communications technology as a panacea for the real underlying problems of society. 
That's to say we must keep our attention on opening opportunities for development of the human potential everywhere, in everyone. If we don't do this, the new technologies will divide us and divert energies from the very real problems which these technologies enlarge in very dangerous ways.